Hello and welcome to Ula Tealy Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Gemini. If Gemini is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. Let's see. Okay. <laughs> right off the top, it looks like we have, um, it looks like a Taurus, but also kind of looks like a uh, hummingbird. Okay. Um, so we have kind of a busy mind going on right now. It seems like you're busy. Uh, doing your work, probably have a lot of things going on in your life, and um, I just kind of get the imagery of kind of, you know, flitting from here to there, back again, um, really just uh, this ability to multitask, but keep a fairly clear mind not getting things all mixed up and, you know, disheveled and um, you really are kind of on um, a wave of pure energy. And thus far, it has not gotten too complicated in the mind yet. Um, so you are really making use of uh, the kind of frequency that is flowing through your life right now. Okay. And that's, that's awesome. We all hope to be in that space. <laughs> I know as a, you know, um, a mom, uh, I definitely enjoy those days that I wake up. I'm feeling clear minded. I have energy. I know I have about, you know, 25 things to get done before the end of the day. And, um, and then on top of that, probably a bunch of things that I noticed to do along the way as well. So, um, you know, anytime that we get that kind of, uh, uh, hummingbird, um, precision, detail oriented, delicate, graceful, uh, that is a good vibe. All right, let's see what else we have going on here. And I want to mention I'm using some different tea leaves today. They're pretty, they're kind of cool. They're longer. Um, this is the, I usually use the Empire of Kiman uh, tea. I, they were out of it where I buy it and, um, and that's okay. It gave me an opportunity to buy uh, <laughs> like five or six different bags of tea to try out some different things. And so today we're doing the Irish breakfast and it is pretty neat. All right. So let's see. Let's give this bowl a twirl. See what's going on. Hopefully everybody is doing well. It seems like we have a lot of uh, that energetic vibe happening. Okay, and I'm noticing here, it looks like we have, it almost, I almost want to say it looks like a 2-2, two, two, uh, but this one is just not, it kind of looks like a 1. So I'm going to say 1 with the 2, so a 12, okay, uh, look out for a 12 this week. Okay, and I just want to bring up this, I just want to, and I'm just looking at this real quick, okay, and I just want to bring up this, uh, this card, I was going to say cup, this card, this is the card that I pulled for the reading today, and this is the Queen of Cups, it's from the Thoth deck, one of my favorite cards, definitely beautiful. I love the waters, the stork. Um, 
of course, the cup and the queen are beautiful. All of that emotionality, divine feminine knowledge, creativity, that uh, creative sexual force that flows um, from the uh, aether into um, the prism of the spirit and uh, out to the material. So definitely a blessed card and um, something I'm happy to see in this in this line of readings we've been doing for you, Gemini. Um, so I really think that with that card especially, uh, we have uh, this, I have this feeling of um, just really getting into a place where you do not... There is no denying your feelings anymore, okay? You do not partake in um, making yourself small, minimizing your feelings. Um, of course, you are mindful that we all have transient feelings. We have, um, you know, flawed perceptions, not enough information. Um, sometimes we can be a little bit, uh, well, for me, I have, um, the diagnosis of CP, CPTSD and anxiety and an anxiety disorder and, um, some other things, um, like ADHD. So these kind of the way that I experience the world is unique to me as it is for each of us, right? So um, for me, although I do not um, dismiss my feelings or my um, anxieties or, um, you know, I know that because of my experience in this life, um, I process things differently than some people, right? And... Um, and, and I'm aware of that, and I take that into consideration. Uh, I, but However, I do not get down with this, um, my feelings are wrong because I have, um, you know, I'm neuro neurodivergent, or um, I have, you know, um, I... I react to things, my body, my actual body re reacts to things when I am, I, I startle easily, for instance, or um, I'm very, you know, cautious, um, a little, vid you know, a little vigilant about my surroundings, about the people that I allow into my life, about the situations I, I will put my family in and myself in. And, um, you know, just really, really mindful of these kinds of things, maybe more so than some other people. Um, but I don't think that's wrong. You know, I'm, I'm not hurting anybody, I should say, you know, and I think that this is kind of maybe to a, you know, obviously you have a different experience and configuration um, for your own personal life and experience within life. So, but I just think that you are very much of the mind that I am, <laughs> that uh, you will not let other people make you feel like your feelings are wrong, that you should not feel the way that you do, um, that uh, you need to hide it, minimize it. Okay. Yes. Maybe you need to contemplate it, go through it a little bit, explore, but not because somebody else is telling you to, because you yourself, you know, are responsible for your experience in your, in your body, in the mundane world, um, in your spirit, spiritual existence, in your interior life. And you have made it a priority to uh, be learned and schooled and, you know, to maybe, I don't know if you could ever master um, how you experience being and information and how they processes as feelings and, and this kind of thing. But, um, it is along the line of, right. You have an active interest in, um, being aware. 
okay? And also trying to look at things in, at different perspectives, okay? And that's, that's wonderful. Um, I do think, and I'm looking right here, there is, there's this person kind of sitting in a sitting posture, grabbing the leg of this, this person who looks like they have their arms up and their head kind of back. It almost is like they're ascending, like they are spreading their wings, like they are rising above. And there is this kind of feeling of being pulled down, held down. And because of the card and it's, relationship with uh it's a very maternal energy okay and i think that this is this plays into um your developed emotionality but in nurturing but also on the other side of it i think that you have experienced a maternal figure maybe also or a grandmother um, can be from either side or somebody who is in the maternal role or in the grandmother role does not have to be blood related does not have to be um, family of origin just somebody who kind of uh, was it could be a teacher a mentor whatever it is okay um, but I think that there was a lot of this person or these people in your younger years really trying for trying to continually tell you that you need to tone down your behavior, your personality. Maybe you were a little bit too colorful. Maybe you um, spoke your mind a little bit too often. Maybe you expressed your emotions uh, publicly. Um, and it made them uncomfortable, right? Uh, I think that this was difficult for you, of course. Um, I also think that uh, depending on what your age is, um, a, is, a lot of us who are a little older, um, and especially if you are older than I am, and your mother and grand, grandmother's uh, generation, there was a lot of you know, social conditioning um, towards tempering of how women express themselves, of course, their roles in society, um, and uh, definitely how there, there was a, there is and there was a large st stigma about appearing to be neurotic, hysterical, um, too emotional, out of control, um, too much themselves, uh, you know, somebody who was not family oriented and, or didn't, uh, exist in traditional, um, gender roles. Okay. And so we have to keep this for the context of what we're talking about. We have to keep these things in perspective, I think. Okay. Um, doesn't make it right, but the world we live in now, although not perfect by any means, right? We have a lot more freedoms than um, people before us. I mean, literally, if you look into um, how women were treated, if they had any kind of audacity to share their voice, okay, especially um, if it, it was a matter of class or, um, you know, ethnic ethnic background um these kinds of things um and i don't want to go down this 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 thing but i will say my family um is native american on one side so uh the stories i've heard um about the things that my great grandmother and my grandmother told me um about what they had to go through to um get to where <sighs> they were when I knew them, um, <laughs> it, it really, it almost makes me want to cry. <laughs> oh, and I'm sorry. I didn't think that would, <laughs> but whew, I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me get a drink of tea. Oh, I gotta get myself together. All right, so anyways, <laughs> um, the world that we live in now is a privilege, not for everybody, of course, but 
um, you know, the stories. And, um, oh, God, it just, I'm sorry, it just breaks my heart. Um, but, you know, I also know the other side of it, which is that these, uh, that these women survived, okay? And they, and they went on to create lives that, you know, that meant something so much to me and to my family, of course, but this is the story in so many families. Um, does it mean that we understood how they behaved how, or their ideas about how um, other people should, uh, should behave or act or their personalities, right? Um, I, you know, I, I grew up in the 90s. I grew up, I was born in the 80s, grew up in the 90s. And, um, you know, the way that I behaved <laughs> was not how they wanted me to, right? Um, and so, um, I understand how that can be so difficult. I can also understand how, um, for some people, especially when they come from a very strict, uh, or overly harsh, um, traditional possibly, a uh, background, household, how this can be carried with you through life and the ways that you do things, the ways that you perceive yourself, the ways that you express yourself. Sometimes it is very much that you have to divide your life into different parts, okay? So you have how you are with your family, how you are with your, uh, you know, versus how you are with your chosen friends and um, significant other and so on, okay? So I think in some, that there's to some degree this feeling of uh, being tied to this energy of um, wanting to, uh, you know, oddly wanting to honor the wishes of our of our of the women and you know feminine people of our families that took care of us nourished us uh brought us up taught us those first things that we know about the world um and uh and how the world is now how the how our world is compared to theirs um and I think there's just, it happens so often that we become these people who question everything that we do um, because there is that early feeling of needing to make yourself more acceptable, ex accessible, oddly, to some reason, but, uh, or that wasn't really what I was going to say, but it is that too. Um, making yourself accessible because you don't want to be difficult. A lot of times it is taught that, you know, being a difficult person is one of the worst things you can be, especially if you are a person, um, and this is, this reading is not just for, uh, women or people who, exp you know, live as women, um, identify in that way or feminine in any way. This is for everybody because we all carry these things that are taught to us by, um, our, fa our fathers, our mothers, our grandparents of both, um, and, and the spectrum between. Okay. But we all carry conditioning. Um, and so I think that, <laughs> kind of getting myself in this little tangent about this. Um, but I think that you have worked very hard. You've worked very hard to uh, be able to accept your feelings for what they are. Try to avoid, abandon this idea of something being wrong that you feel. Wrong, right. It doesn't matter. You're feeling it, okay? Um, really, really taking so much time in your life to find the courage 
to be who you are, to find that authentic place in yourself and to show people that, to find places where you can do that. Maybe even be able to do that in, a, in most of your life or all of your life, okay? Um, you know, a lot of us, we, we never get to that point. I know that there, I tone things down all the time with certain people. I even talk differently with certain people. It just depends. And I catch myself doing it and I think, oh my goodness, you know, the way that I, that I, the way that I spoke growing up is not the way that I speak now most of the time, but it comes out of me, especially when I'm feeling angry. <laughs> Um, but finding those places in ourselves that we bring up to the surface and we share with others, you've done so much work to do that. I think in this work as well, I think in this work as well, and I see this one here, I see the, there's two of them. There's this seated figure here looking at what I estimate being the moon. Okay, I also see a standing figure here looking up what I esti estimate to be the moon. These to me are both postures of love, devotion, honor. Okay, and that moon very much related to that divine feminine once again. Okay, I feel that you um, have along this journey come to the realization instead of being resentful for and maybe there is, there's still the pain, okay, of not being allowed to be um, all of yourself from a young age. Um, it hurts. It always hurts. It, all of us, boy, boy girl, um, they, whatever, uh, on the spectrum, it doesn't matter. If you are limited, and we all are, that's just part of being conditioned to be out in the world. Uh, to some degree, people, we're all, we all go through conditioning and some more harsh than others, of course. Um, but I feel that you have come to a place through this work that you've done, that you have looked at these people, these women in your life, and you have forgiven them because they're human beings and they're flawed. They're flawed and, you know, they carry their own pain and they've, they went through their own, um, I hate to, you know, I, in my mind, and this is, <laughs> maybe it sounds like I'm quite a feminist and, you know, of course I'm a woman and a mother of a, of a daughter and, you know, um, but the kind of, mutilation that we can go through as beings, the fragmentation of our psyche um, at the hands of people who love us and I, they don't necessarily know that they are doing it, right? It's not often that it's vindictive. And, and really, I think um, I'm not, I didn't experience life as a boy so I cannot say, I cannot speak on this, but I can say that as a girl, as a woman, um, the way that we're raised often comes from these people who are in our lives. They fear the world for us. And so a lot of our, you know, training as beings comes from a place of fear and they teach us to be afraid because they're afraid because scary things happen in the world but in that fear when we teach from a place of fear a lot of missteps right things can things can get really muddled in that kind of teaching but I think that you know that. And I think that you really, uh, you've, you've worked hard to come to peace with that. And I think that this is really what the energy of this reading is about. And I think this is also about your road to joy. Okay. Your um, ability 
to transcend and, in, and enjoy the pleasures of life, to be fully in your body, to be fully in your spirit, to be fully in your emotions with as little guilt and shame as you can, right? <laughs> and I feel so emotional. This reading really has me. <laughs> I'm about to cry <laughs> again. My goodness. Um, it, I feel I feel like spirit is really here with me. My I feel that, you know, my people are here with me. My my long line of <laughs> strong women. They have my back. And you know what? Yours have your, your back as well. Okay. Now I'm trying to look at this one. We have a couple of L shapes. This one, this one. We looked at, we found the 12. I think the L is going to be important. We have a little bit of... Um, and this one to me, it looks like... It really looks like two eyes, okay, and the nose. And I just really have this feeling of you being looked over, looked after, okay, being held. And I feel like if your mother, if, if your grandmother has uh, transcended their physical form, okay, transitioned, um, I feel that, and, and even if they haven't really, but this may be kind of unspoken, okay? This might be something where the, it's, they just don't know how to explain this to you or the words. They don't have the words. Um, but that they are so proud of you for what you, what you have done. You have broken free of something that um, has taken endless generations i mean to the point where you can't even imagine how many people are above you on your your chain of people right that have um have walked the earth for you to be here and you you have broken a lot of these cycles a lot of the this conditioning and living in your truth And so before I get a little bit more weepy, because <laughs> I feel like I can, okay? Um, I want to look at, I want to look at this. And I'm seeing that we have like a J figure, okay? But also an exclamation mark, okay? And I see that there's a bit of an, there's an ascent coming. And I really think that this, next period of time is so much about being present in your experience right now. Okay. Really noticing how you feel, noticing the sensations, noticing your thoughts or lack of thoughts. Okay. Noticing the impressions that you are taking along with you and just being in that. All right. Somebody told me today on a comment that I need to stop apologizing. <laughs> so uh, I'm not I'm not going to stop apologizing because I, you know, that's I do. I do a lot. I want everybody to feel. I want people to feel safe around me. And if I, you know, even if I'm not in the wrong, I still want you to know that I'm thoughtful <laughs> and try to be considerate of how you may be experiencing me or the things, the noises, the animals, children, um, you know, whatever else is going on. Um, and so I do apologize here and there. And um, here I will apologize if this <laughs> reading got a little too emotional, but you know what? It felt good. It felt, it feels good to, to think about these things. It really, it activates them in the front of my mind. My heart feels, uh, on fire right now thinking about 
<laughs> all of the strength, you know, that we all truly have. I mean, some days, you know, I wake up and I don't think about it. I think about just, it seems like a bleak tundra before me. And, um, and I, you know, I get lost in that easily. But then I remember, you know, I remember that, uh, that it's, it's taken a lot of strength for not only me, but the people that I witness every day, uh, that have survived their lives, survived their days, survived themselves, survived their circumstances. And, uh, that's enough to keep me going for sure. It is. Okay. All right, Jim and I, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I always appreciate your time and I'm so honored to bring you these messages. Um, I'm not going to do my spiel. I just don't feel like it. It doesn't go with this, but I appreciate you all. And, um, you know, I hope you have a wonderful next week. In the meantime, you can look at your other placements. I would be happy for you to do that. Um, you know, every reading will have something hopefully that resonates with you. Um, but other than that, we will talk in a few days and I hope you have a most wonderful days ahead. <laughs>